welcome to Women's World. In this episode, we look at language and beliefs in the context of violence. We speak to Eddie Isla, the founder of Warrior Culture, a performance and training organization working with men in redefining their roles, male belief systems, and male masculinity. Also in this segment, we talk to clinical psychologist, Dr. Amy Fruin, as she tells us more about language and beliefs in the context of violence. Causes of anger, uh, everyone has their, their own reason why people are committing violence in men and women. Um, and people will say it's jealousy, it's distrust, it's finances, it's alcohol, it's drug abuse. Everyone's got a different reason. Underlying every one of those reasons is core fear. There's actually no reason to be scared of anger because it's an emotion that we all have and it's perfectly natural. The difference between anger and aggression, and aggression is how you act out. I'm uh, Eddie Isla. I'm the founder of Warrior Culture. Uh, Warrior Culture in Papua New Guinea is a, a training organization, uh, a performance and training organization that uh, they work with men to redefine male, male belief systems and male masculinity um, to empower men uh, to overcome their, their tendency or willingness to commit family sexual violence. Uh, causes of anger, uh, everyone has their, their own reason why people are committing violence in men and women. Um, and people will say it's jealousy, it's distrust, it's finances, it's alcohol, it's drug abuse. Everyone's got a different reason. Underlying every one of those reasons is core fear. So as humans, all of us have uh, core fear underlying. Uh, whenever we feel scared, there's three core fears. And basically, uh, it's a feeling that I'm not good enough, I don't belong or I'm not loved. So if someone is jealous, they're, they're worried that their partner or husband or wife may cheat on them. And at the, at the root of it, that means that they're not good enough or they won't be loved and so forth. So when someone experiences that fear and it comes straight away, comes really quick, uh, they react. And the reactions to fear fight, you know, you start fighting or you run away or you, you freeze. Um, so at the core of it, that's what's happening at a subconscious level, but human beings don't know that it's happening. My name is Dr. Amy Fruin. I'm a clinical psychologist by training, which means as a clinical psychologist, I'm trained to work with the people who have the most severe uh, issues around mental health. Anger, it's a great question because anger is an emotion. Uh, we have emotions running through our body every day, all day. So there's actually no reason to be scared of anger because it's an emotion that we all have and it's perfectly natural. The difference between anger and aggression, and aggression is how you act out. And the things that make us angry are different for different people. So we all have our triggers. And then over time we respond in particular patterns. And sometimes we learn the best way to, to sit with that, to not sit with that feeling is to act out in forms of aggression. So just making the difference first is that anger is a natural emotion. That's very important to have. We all have it. We can't run away from it. It's perfectly natural. And aggression is something that is a um, reaction to when we feel like we've been hurt physically or maybe it's our pride and we feel like we have to defend ourselves. And that is a learned response where we act out really aggressively, whether it's through our words or through our, through our fists. Um, and that's, that, that's the violence that we're trying to separate and help people to learn to deal with their emotions and sit with that, but not act on it. Basically, when you're looking at family sexual violence, uh, we talk about it like this. Joe is beating up Mary today. And tomorrow we'll say, Joe beat up Mary. 
And then in a week's time, we'll say Mary got beat up by Joe. And then we'll say Mary got beaten up. And then over time, as time passes, we'll say, ah, oh, she's a battered woman. And everyone forgot about Joe. So who is Joe beating up now? Has he overcome his problems, his insecurities, his fears? So men have a big role because if we are part of the problem and, and perpetrating, um, we need help because underlying that uh, violence is a man that's scared, is a powerless man. That's why he's trying to impose his power. Because if you're, if you're powerful, would you need to beat someone up? You'd be pretty calm. So men have a big role to discover themselves and find out who they are, uh, to feel comfortable within themselves. Um, if men really want to lead their families and demonstrate leadership uh, and show their sons a good example and, and show their partners uh, a good example as well, so that their partners want to follow them, men have to stand up. Welcome back as we look at language and beliefs in the context of violence. We look at what makes a person angry and what is the psychological response to anger. Eddie Isla from Warrior Culture and clinical Dr. Amy Fruin tells us more. Gender-based violence in PNG unfortunately is very common and I guess it's worth saying that this sort of violence happens on different levels. It happens on around name calling, it it's includes sexual harassment, um, rape within marriage, uh, and also things like holding, withholding money so you know, the school fees don't get paid. So they can happen from a range from subtle to very obvious things. Um, so that means that every one of us probably sees these subtle or obvious signs every single day. So that's actually an opportunity for individuals to intervene at every level. So the survivors are your sisters, your mothers, your aunties. They need love and support um, and understanding, but not the judgments. Not the judgments that they've done something wrong. Um, but also because violence is so common, the perpetrators are also within the community. They're your uncles and brothers and cousins and your Wontok, so they actually need help too. So they need help to, to as we're saying, share your problems. Um, help them to understand that they don't need to use aggression to, um, as their, their first, first line that they can talk through problems, so that's really important. Uh, violence or depression or if someone's, if a male person is going through a challenging time in his life, um, there's an expectation that he should be strong, he can't cry. So men are not speaking up and admitting that their fears or that they're scared about their wife, you know, um, potentially leaving them or unhappy with them, etc. So the Melanesian way that's proven in the past, and I think it's proven throughout societies around the world, not just Melanesia, is for men to help other men and to speak up, to share their, their burdens. Uh, it doesn't mean you're weak. Uh, allow yourself to feel emotion. You don't have to be the, the, the man that never cries, um, that holds all the emotion in. And in fact, that's dangerous because that man will explode uh, at some point, and that's what's happening uh, with men who can't express themselves. The um, feeling of wanting to be strong is important for both men and women. Both men and women should always feel like they, they have inner strength. I think women typically are better at making connections and sharing problems, and we see that the world over. We see that women prefer to open themselves up 
Um, and that's unfortunately um, uh, an indicator for men that puts them at higher risk. If you can't share your problems or you can't talk to your mates, your friends, your one talk, then the problems stay inside. And if they stay inside, then they have that tendency to bottle up and then explode. Preferably, don't keep your problems to yourself. Find somebody that you can trust and whose uh, opinions that you respect because it's, chances are the problems that you're going through have been experienced by others and you can get some support and maybe some advice about how to handle the situation better. So counselling uh, has been with us for a very long time uh, and the idea of seeking support is, is timeless. Um, the, over the last 100 years or so, uh, we have started to develop particular techniques and particular therapies um, associated with counselling. So we're getting a lot more sophisticated and we know from research as well what works. So over time, um, particularly not just in the Western world but in Eastern philosophy too, we've got some really interesting and nice models um, that can help people get to achieve their goals. In PNG, uh, because it's a very new field, we don't know what works exactly. We've got some ideas um, that we know that are universal, that feeling of sharing a problem, we say a problem shared is a problem halved. So the actual, just the experience of talking to somebody, um, whether it's the family member um, or a, a religious person or an elder, can really help to, to reduce the anxieties and reduce the sort of enormity of the problems that still is counselling. Um, and so that has traditional forms um, and as PNG gets more experienced counsellors working in the field, then you can become sort of more sophisticated in the techniques that you use to actually help people you're going. But traditional counselling is really sitting in a room or not necessarily in a room, but sitting, talking to somebody and, and, and just sitting and working through the problem. There's always a system that sits behind that and it's unfair to think that this is necessarily a man versus a woman situation. So violence can happen on both and partner violence can happen in, in both ways. And it affects the family. And if it affects the family, then it affects the community. So an opportunity to get some help as a family um, Maybe it's not appropriate for every family to separate. Maybe there's some repair work that can be done. Perhaps there's addressing of drug and alcohol issues. Perhaps there's an anger management issue. There are norm normally many, many practical steps that you can take to prevent further problems from happening. Um, but you do need to take that first step and actually seek counselling. Welcome back. You're watching Women's World as we feature language and beliefs in the context of violence. As human beings, we often get angry and we have the power to be aggressive. However, we are able to use this power in a positive way. Dr. Amy Fruin, Eddie Isla and CEO of City Mission, Reverend Ronald Brown, with more. How do we achieve uh, generational change? I think uh, every man right now has to... Uh, and woman, I think all of us, every individual in Papua New Guinea needs to stand up, become aware of what is family sexual violence and make a decision. Uh, who do I want to be? Perpetrators committing violence uh, are not happy. Not happy people. They can't concentrate at work, at home. They have poor relationships. They have poor results in their business, in their careers and so forth. So. If we want to achieve a generational change, everyone needs to look within themselves and decide who do I want to be? Because the change will not come from anyone else but yourself. But the potential is there within every individual in Papua New Guinea and throughout the world to, to uh, manifest and create your own destiny, uh, to create your own results. And it really depends on you yourself and what you want. And so, the more people learn about themselves and turn inward instead of reaching for 
you know, the external things in life, then the more they will understand who they are, feel comfortable and feel secure and confident. And uh, those around them will see it and change. It's, a, it's just a natural by, byproduct. So I think that's how we do it with each and every one of us just taking ownership of ourselves. We don't need to change anyone else. Just, just be the change. People can be very nervous about going and seeking counselling and seemingly try to avoid it at all costs because it's associated with perhaps the shame and, and a feeling of, of weakness. But counselling, trained counsellors are people who will help welcome you, come in, help you talk through your problem, teach you that this is a safe environment to talk, you can talk openly, and actually, whatever is said between you stays in that room. So that's really important. So you can have that comfort comfortableness to speak freely. It is often a process and sometimes you're not gonna feel like telling your whole story straight away. And that's okay, the counselor can work with that. And they're just going to use some questions um, to help you sort of tell your story and they're really going to listen to you um, and sometimes they, they might give their opinions or their advice but generally they're trying to help you just work through all of your problems. You don't need to say anything that you don't want to say and you're not going to be asked to have a form of action or have any goals that you don't want to do. It's something that the person seeking counselling completely leads. So hopefully it's actually considered a nice and supportive experience. Ronald Brown and I am the CEO for City Mission. And City Mission is an organization that has been around for about 24 years. Um, and one of the areas that we are active in in, in meeting needs in the community is working with um, women and children and, and in, in some cases men who have been victims of gender-based violence offering them uh, a place to come, a place to receive counseling, and a place to um, hopefully receive help and hope. Like it would for any physical, deep physical trauma, it takes time for rehabilitation and full healing. Even more so for that that occurs into somebody's spirit or soul. And so we, we realized in doing that, that uh, we have to, our program of counseling and meeting somebody's need um, is, has a long-term approach to it. It's why City Mission, across the spectrum of everything that we do, uh, in, incorporates also accommodation and the ability to, to try to transplant people into a different environment, take them out of that place where the injury occurred and put them into an environment that is healing, as well as provide the spiritual support and the counseling support, as well as the medical and the legal and all of those other, all of those other factors. So, that, you know, that's a that's a key value for us: is get them out, get the get that that person that's been injured out of that environment and give them a safe place to heal. There are, there's ways out of that. And, and one of those ways out is not necessary, it's not just, it, it, even though one of the ways out is to get out of that relationship completely, and we understand that. And, but another way out is to see that partner change. And to see, because we also believe in families. And, and there's, you know, we see the, the times where the partner will come in and will be part of that counseling process that will heal not just the, not just the, the survivor of that, of that violence and the children, but the entire family. And see, we believe in that from a, from a biblical Christian spiritual perspective, because I believe that God wants families whole. Ideally for me is to see, is to see a woman come in with her children and that comes in and seeks refuge and gets that healing that occurs there and then, the, and then that, man to come in, that partner to come in, and then begin to be healed. From Because in many cases, that perpetrator, they're a victim of their environment. They've in, they've in a sense inherited a thinking that it can be changed. 
where they value their partner, they value their wife. In City Mission, with one of our aspects, our, our longest part of what we do is we're working with young men off the streets of our urban areas. And we strategically uh, address that with these, with our young men that we have as kind of a captive audience that come in and be part of our programs. They may, they may have come in to, to receive, um, you know, literacy training, vocational training, or just help because they're living on the streets. And, but part of that process that we now strategically go after is them to, to teach them how to be a godly man, a godly father, a godly husband, which will not continue that cycle of violence that they, they themselves, in most cases, have experienced or at least seen. So we, we're trying, City Mission is trying to get ahead of that cycle and draw on a line with a generation of young men that say, this is not okay. This is not good. This is not, this cannot continue. So, and I think that's a broader part of the counseling. So if we can get ahead of it with young men, we can get ahead of it with children, to be honest with you. We can get ahead of it with children that have seen the violence and have already started thinking that way. If we can have an impact on that, and other organizations within the community, church organizations and others. It's not just City Mission, there's many others too. And we can, we can begin to draw a line and say no more. Thank you for watching this special edition of Women's World highlighting gender-based violence prevention and response in Papua New Guinea. In this special season, we share more about men as champions of change, economic empowerment, empowering youth and adolescents, and many more. If you have a story to contribute, feel free to get in contact with us at womensworld at mtv.com.pg. You can watch this edition again on MTV Online, and it is also available for your listening on FM 100. We look forward to you joining us again here on Women's World. Until next time, take care.